Hi, welcome to the intro to Prop, Scene, and SFX tutorial. Stay tuned to learn about the many different elements that go into the background of every animation with Crazy Talk Animator. As I play through this Crazy Talk embedded project, you can notice a sort of difference in movement between objects in the foreground and background. Let's open up the 3D view of this project and take a look. The first thing you'll notice is all of the scene elements are layered at various positions on the Z plane. The movement you saw was just the animated scene camera moving through the scene. If I select items in the scene, I can change their position in a 3D environment by using the directional arrows that appear. When the position is changed in 3D view, you will get a different effect from the camera angle. There are tons of things you can do if you know how to set up your scene in the right way, but let's start with the basics, the background. I'm going to bring in this scene prop to make it seem like we're in the interior of a car first. It's not that fun to travel through pure white space, so I'm going to import in a dash cam video of a car racing. One thing you need to know about backgrounds is they are fixed to, well, the background of your scene. That means you can move other scene objects as much as you want, but the background will stay stationary. You can see that even if I go into 3D view, the background stays where it is. Now I'll just reposition my vehicle interior and press play. Now we're really getting somewhere. Sometimes you'll import in a background that doesn't quite fit your scene or distorts. You can adjust that by going into project settings and adjusting your display mode to tile, fit, or stretch. It's just like the desktop background in Windows. Another way you can adjust your screen is to go to your export tab and adjust the output dimension of your video or image. Inside the background section is the prop section. Props are elements that you can drag and drop into your scene. Here I'll show you a few interesting ways to speed up your prop usage. First is duplication. If I select this chair and hold control while I click and drag, it will create a duplicate chair. It's super easy and fast. Then if I hold down the control key, I can select all three chairs here and create another three using the same technique. This is really useful for stuff like background vegetation, clouds, etc. Sometimes, when you have too many items on your screen, it's hard to select the thing you want. If your scene is getting a bit crowded, you can go down to your scene manager and manually select things. But if you don't want to search through your scene manager, you can lock the items that you don't want to select. In this example, I'm locking the dog so he can't be selected. Then even if I drag my selection square over him, he won't be included in my selection. Eventually, you'll want to move beyond the default Crazy Talk props and want to bring in some of your own. You can do this in virtually any file format by simply clicking and dragging. Just import in your item as a prop. Here I'm importing in a little stage in PNG format for my dog. You can add this to your custom library by simply clicking the Add key when you're in the prop section. Just give it a name and save it, and then it can easily be imported into any scene in the future. One more thing, if you want to temporarily hide objects, you can also do that in the scene manager by toggling the visibility box, just like I did with the lock function. There are two main ways to move objects on your stage area. The first way is to go into 3D view and select your item. You can simply move it in any direction by using the directional arrows shown. Another way is to use the Z-depth arrow located near the bottom of any selected prop. If I use the Z-depth arrow on this desk, you can see by the 3D view that I moved it way back in the scene. So now I'll import in an image layer. Image layers are different from props because they stay attached to the camera no matter where it moves. Just think of it like a sticker on the lens of your camera that you can resize and move around. In this example, I'll bring in some sunshine and give an example of opacity change as well. If I move the time scrub forward and change the opacity of my image layer, I can make it briefly flash and then disappear. There are also lens flare effects that can be used for this purpose as well. I can use it in a scene like this, where I'm using the sunshine to obscure the dog's initial appearance on the screen. You can also layer your props in unique ways to simulate movement and depth change. Here I'll bring in a side view of our car and reposition it. I can then put my character in the scene and add a nice background image of New York City. I just need to reposition and resize it in the background. To simulate the motion, I'm going to select everything in my scene except for the image and move it to a different position after advancing the timeline. Just add a little facial puppeteering to my character and I can produce a result like this in minutes. If I get a widescreen image like this image of Earth, I can make a space car. So 
Scenes are an important part of Crazy Talk Animator. Be aware that if you change your scene, your whole previous scene will be gone, including the background. One useful thing you can do with the scene is create your own and save it for later use. If I take this group of chairs, I can save it as a scene much the same way I saved a prop. Just click on the Add button and name it. Then I can load this scene of chairs anytime I want and use a variety of backgrounds, or even add other props to the scene and resave it. The cool thing about scenes is that even though I switch the scene, the characters and their actions will remain. SFX are simple to use as well. Here I have a brooding character, but if I add some SFX, I can enhance the effect even more. I'll add a thunderstorm to darken his already dark mood. There are also a variety of text bubbles that you can import as well, like I'm doing here. Just simply click and drag them in. Similar to what I did with the image layer, I'm also going to change the opacity of the speech bubble to fade in. I'll just put another SFX in the speech bubble to get an effect like this. Be aware that some props are interactive as well. If you right click on them and use the sprite editor, you can key in a different sprite, which in this case is running water. You can create your own sprite library to animate your on-screen props as well. Hopefully now you have a solid introduction to the scene elements in Crazy Talk Animator. Now it's your turn.